Just to introduce myself, I'm Captain Mike Fernand from Venice, Louisiana. First of all, I'd like to thank Secretary Barham and uh, the Commission for allowing me to speak uh, my opinion and my voice. Unfortunately, this state is what I would call in a crisis mode right now. It's unprecedented. We've never seen this. We've never experienced And I don't think anybody in this room anticipated this to ever happen to us. <clears throat> that being said, and I know this is going to offend some other people that I'm very good friends with in this room, I have serious questions on the catch and release program. Uh, I can honestly say when the accident first happened and the closures were enacted, I thought that possibly catch and release was a good angle and a very smart angle to go with two months ago. After seeing what I've seen, being part of what I've been part of down at the mouth of the river, I certainly understand the reasons for the closures. I understand the reasons for the ban on the fishing. And I'm against the catch and release for several reasons. One reason is, just to reiterate what was just said, I certainly can see where the taxing of our wildlife department and our agents to enforce what is proposed is going to be impossible. Uh, if you were down there and saw the activity, what these agents have to do daily, right now from the time this accident has occurred, currently today, what their daily chores are, I don't know how they're going to have time to even enforce that, let alone all across our coastline. We barely have enough agents to enforce issues when, when things are normal. Now that we're in a crisis situation, we want to tax the department even further. I have great concerns on that. <clears throat> Dr. Guidry brought up some very important facts earlier this morning. The smell and the taste has been talked about by several people that have come up here and spoke about it. Dr. Guidry, from what I understand, the smell and the taste is related to the hydrocarbons. We're concerned about a variety of other chemicals that are contained within the Corexic 9500 that was saturated across our coastline, saturated in the Gulf of Mexico. It's confirmed that we have plumes that are out in the Gulf of Mexico, just barely off of our coastline, that are dictated by currents. We have a variety of fin fish, shrimp, crustaceans that spawn at this time of year. We know that the eggs, the larva, and the juvenile of these offsprings, if they come in contact with that, it's already been stipulated by several organizations, several scientists from major universities across the Gulf Coast, upon contact of these spoons in these areas, we're looking at probably certain death and immediate death because of the eggs, of the larva, and of the juveniles, they're not strong enough to sustain the contact of these chemicals. So we're possibly looking at a two or three year concern of our fisheries. And let's, let's, let's really understand what, what's, what's going on here. Our resource is our wetlands and is our fisheries. If we don't have that, we don't have anything that we're standing up here to argue for or against. Our resource is the number one issue here, and that's what we have to be concerned about. We have chemicals that have been dispersed into our Gulf to technically disperse the soil, to displace the soil, to put it below the surface of the water that we can't see, so it's supposed to be out of sight and out of mind. Nobody anticipated for this oil, and as you said, it should be a spill, it should be a gusher, to go on for 80 days. I don't think anybody in this room here expected that. I, for one, didn't. I said, well, this will, this will be stopped within a few days and everything will be back to normal. We'll clean up the mess and it'll be done. Well, it's not, and we don't even know what the foreseeable future adds. We don't know what the chemicals that are contained with the Corexit 9500 our federal government wrote a letter to BP and demanded them to quit using Corexit 9500 because of the toxicity levels and the damage that could cause to our estuaries and to our fin fish and to the environment of the Gulf of Mexico. Demanded them to quit using it. 
within 48 hours. Lisa Jackson, who was the director of that division, responded later, I mean, excuse me, BP responded back to Lisa Jackson and said they were going to continue to use it, regardless of what the federal government demanded. I don't really know, and I'm not a scientist, I'm not a biologist, I don't really know what is better. Is the dispersant better, or is the oil better? I don't think either one is good for us. If I take my bilge in my boat, after I clean my boat, and pop it out, and accidentally put a sheet on the water, I'm subjected to a $50,000 fine because of the detrimental results to our environment. Now, you're going to tell me that hundreds of thousands of, or millions of gallons that have gone into the Gulf of Mexico, and I understand it's a large body of water, but because of this dispersant, it's coagulated that oil, it's directed that oil below the surface. Two days, the last two days, I rode from Pass Lutra all the way around from South Pass to Southwest Pass, all the way to Empire. There is a thick sheen on the water. The stench is strong. You cannot see the oil. I know it's there. It's below the surface. And when I'm telling you, we're, we're talking four-foot seas, and it's slick on top because of the sheen. And, and the stench was strong. I know there's some problems there. We have, we really have to concentrate on that. Our most important thing in the state of Louisiana is our brand. We have developed, I started my business 29 years ago. We developed this to be the number one fishing destination in the United States, one of the top five destinations in the world. Our brand has already been tarnished completely. <laughs> by the press from the start of day one. I'm not saying it's worthy, I'm not saying it's not worthy, but it's, it's, it's tarnished. And yes, we're purporting our seafood is good to eat, but that's coming from areas that aren't closed. That's, com that's coming from areas that are open, and they should be safe to eat at that point. What we don't know is the areas that are closed and the potential problem, and we have to have what I would call very strong information, and I'm not one that believes in, in, in government intervention into our daily lives, but at this point, we've got to get some clear facts before we allow not only the catch and release, because somebody somewhere, if there is contamination, is going to get a hold of something, the press is going to get a hold of it, and it's going to be not only nationwide, it's going to be worldwide, and then our brand may not be recoverable. I say let's clean up the oil, let's well, let's cap it first, let's clean it up, let's get some factual information, and then at that point determine what avenue we have to go on. Um, and just on a last note, Larry, if you think that madness is going to create results, wait till you get your results next year on your duck information. So I think you're going to get some serious uh, comments back next year, participation-wise, because that's another avenue that will be discussed soon. I want to thank everybody for the opportunity, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay.